Hey there, it's me Eden. Welcome to Cross-Dressing Adventure Stories. Today I'm going to share with you, Cross-Dressing Adventure Story called, How Parents Feminized Me, Part 1. So, if you're new to the channel, then please consider subscribing to get a new story every day and please support my work, and buy me a coffee worth $1 only. Support link in the pinned comment, thanks. Christmas comes but once a year. So the old saying goes. Well this year was a wonderful Christmas for me. December 24th came and my sister Janet and I got ready for bed early just as our parents asked. Janet is six and I am nine. My name is John Michael Smith. My sister and I went upstairs to bed and mom and dad came in to tuck us in and tell us to stay in bed so Santa would come. I knew better but played along for my little sister's benefit. She was all excited as this was to be her Barbie Christmas. Every time she talked to Santa all she wanted was Barbie this and Barbie that a me. I told Mom and Dad that G.I. Joe and Voltron were what I wanted. Somehow I think they knew that wasn't what I really wanted but they both said they would see what a Santa could do. I had a secret wish that I told myself every night. I wish I could be a girl for Christmas. I really wanted dresses, dolls, tea sets and a Barbie for Christmas just like Janet did. I just was too embarrassed to tell my parents my true feelings. I had been dressing in mom's things for the last three years. I took my bath alone so it was easier to rummage through the hamper and try on different things. Nothing fit very well, it was all too big. But the thrill was still there and I enjoyed it. Christmas morning arrived and Janet woke up early and ran around getting everyone else up so we could all see what Santa had brought. At our house we had to have breakfast before we could open presents. So I helped mom make eggs and toast while Janet set the table and chattered about the presents in the front room. Dad was making sure there was film in the camera and that the batteries were all there in case something came without them included. Mom sensed I wasn't very excited this morning and she asked me if something was wrong. I told, no, I just can't get as excited about Christmas as when I believed in Santa Claus. She said, we'll see how excited you are when you open your presents, and left it at that. I have never seen Janet completely finish a meal before. But she not only ate all of her breakfast, she was the first one done. You could tell she was excited. Dad and I helped clear the table and rinse the dishes so they would be easier to wash later. Then it was into the front room before Janet burst from the excitement. Janet and I separated the packages into piles for Mom, Dad, me and her, then we all started opening them. Janet got a new dress and Mom got one that matched it. Both were emerald green with white lace trim around the neck and arms and looked great. They were going to wear them to Grandma's house today. Other packages included white tights and a slip for Janet so that she had a complete Christmas outfit. When I opened mine I got a new shirt, pants and a pullover sweater to wear to Grandma's. Needless to say I was very disappointed. The rest of the presents were okay, I got six G.I. Joes and a helicopter that took me and Dad four hours to put together. Some assembly required. I also got some new freight cars for the train set and a station house to assemble. All in all an okay set of presents for a boy. Afternoon we all went and changed to go to Grandma's house for dinner. Mom and Janet looked great in their mother-daughter dresses. 
They both had red and green ribbons in their hair, the green dresses with white tights and black shoes. They looked like they just stepped out of the J.C. Penny catalog pages. Dad wore an outfit similar to mine. A shirt, dark slacks, and a pullover sweater with brown penny loafers. Then we all went to the car and off to Grandma's house. Dinner was the normal family affair with my uncles and aunts and cousins all assembled for the traditional family meal. We all had some small presents under the tree too. Janet got another Barbie and some clothes, both for Barbie and for herself. I got a model of a ship and some more shirts and pants. Like I said, not a bad set of presents for a boy. When all the visiting was over, Mom said it was time to go home. We packed the car and kissed everyone. Goodbye, and left for home. The rest of the day turned out to be a lot of fun. Janet invited the GI Joe team over to Barbie's dream house for dinner after their mission. I got to help dress all the Barbies and set up the dream house with her so that it would be ready for the men when they arrived. We had a good time that night. Each Barbie was dressed differently, so we would know who was whose girlfriend. It was a lot of fun, and we played until Mom came and told us it was bath time, and we had to clean up and put everything away. Janet went and took her bath and put on her nightgown. Then I went and took my bath and put on my pajamas. Mom and Dad came upstairs and gave Janet a kiss and turned out the light and then came into my room. Did you have a good Christmas, John? Mom asked. It was okay. I got most of the things I wanted. Well, I'm glad you did. Sleep tight, and we'll see you in the morning. Dad told me as he turned out the light. I laid there in bed and thought about the day and all the presents that I got and that Janet got. In my own mind, I thought it's not fair. Janet gets all kinds of neat stuff, and I can't have any of it. I started to cry and thought about how Christmas would have been different if I were a girl. I fell asleep and dreamed that on Christmas I ran into the front room with my family, and all the presents were for Elisa. There was an emerald green dress that matched Mom's and Janet's. I also got white tights and a slip and camisole and black Mary Janes to complete the outfit. The dream snapped over to getting dressed and going to Grandma's house, and how all my relatives thought it was so oh cute that the three of us had matching dresses. I even got to help Grandma in the kitchen with the holiday dinner. I was rudely awakened from the last part of this wonderful dream by Janet squealing and tugging on my arm. Get up! Get up! Santa came again last night and left a bunch of presents under the tree. I sat up in bed and looked at my sister, confused, of course. What did you say? I said Santa left some more presents under the tree. Now get up. I got out of bed, put my robe on, and followed Janet to the front room. It was true. There, under the tree, sat a pile of brightly wrapped packages. Dad walked up behind us and looked in the room and said, "Well, what do you know? Santa must have forgotten a few presents. You both know the rules. We'll have breakfast before we open the presents." Janet went up to get Mom while Dad and I started breakfast. Dad went all out this morning and made French toast and bacon. This took a little longer than normal, so we had to sit and wonder about the presents for a longer period of time. Finally, we were done and the dishes were rinsed, and we went into the front room. 
The boxes were arranged in front of the tree with one box set on the floor in front of the pile. Janet picked it up and said, This says it's for you, John. It says something else, but I can't read that yet. It was for me and the rest of the writing said I was to open the card on the package and then this present before any of the others. I told Janet, Mom and Dad what it said and they told me to go ahead and open the card and read it. I opened the envelope and took out the card. It had a cute teddy bear on the front with a green and red ribbon around its neck. It said across the top in flowing script, Merry Christmas to a special girl. My heart skipped a beat and then began to race, my mouth went dry and I think my eyes must have popped out of my head. My cheeks turned bright red and felt like they were on fire. I just stood there and stared at the envelope. Mom asked, What's the card say, honey? Her words shook me out of my state of shock. Um, mm, -mm it says Merry Christmas to a special girl. Well, open it up and read the inside, Dad said. Mom sat there with a smile as did Janet. Dad just sat there watching what was going on with a small grin on his face. I opened the card and nearly fainted when I read the first words. Dear Lisa, I stopped reading and just stood there. How? Who? When? This was my most intimate secret. No one knew my girl a name. I would lie awake at night and relive my days as if I were Lisa and not John. This was my inner fantasy coming true. Mom spoke first. Please read the card to us, Lisa. We all want to know what it says. I didn't notice that she used my girl name. So I stammered out an okay and began to read the note in the card. Dear Lisa, I don't know the number of times I have heard you crying at night over not being a girl. I have heard you dream of being Lisa and how sweet and wonderful life would be if you could be a girl. I talked this over with my elves and Mrs. Claus and came to the decision that you could be Lisa for one holiday. Christmas is a magical time of the year. This year is yours to behold that magic and restore your belief in the spirit of Christmas. I want you to open the package this card was attached to and then do as your mother tells you. I have arranged all of this in advance. Merry Christmas. Santa. I reread the note a couple of more times. I couldn't believe what I just read. My family was sitting there all smiles, like this was perfectly normal. Mom spoke first. Why don't you open the present and see what's inside? Okay. Are you sure it's okay? I mean, I'm a little nervous, Mom. You read the note? It tells you that we all have been told about this special present, Lisa. So go ahead and open the present. Mom looked at me and smiled. Janet was getting anxious. Hurry up, Lisa, and open the present or I'll tear it open for you. I picked up the package and took off the bow. Then carefully opened the paper and slid it off the box. I opened the box slowly, half afraid something would jump out at me. My hands were shaking and this all seemed to take forever. When I opened the box and moved back the red and white tissue paper there was a nightgown with a strawberry shortcake on it. Along with the gown were my little pony barrettes and slippers. Mom said, Lisa we should go and get you changed so you can open the rest of your presents.
We picked up the package with the nightgown, barrettes, and slippers, and I followed Mom upstairs. We went into the guest bedroom, and Mom turned to me after we were there. This is Lisa's room. All of your things will be kept in here, so that whenever you are Lisa, you will have a room of your own. You're old enough to not have to share a room with your sister, Mom. Why? How did you? I mean, when did you? Honey, moms and dads found these things out. We observe our children closer than you think. I know you rummage through the hamper. I know you cry yourself to sleep wishing to be Lisa. I know that you didn't want half of what you got for Christmas. And I know that you talk in your sleep. So hearing what you wanted was easy. Mom, I love you. I even cried a little, knowing that my family loved me enough to make this day happen. Mom told me to take off my pajama top while she held up the nightgown. I did, and she slid it over my head. It felt wonderful. Then she handed me a matching pair of panties and said, "Take off your pajama bottoms and put these on instead. I'll turn around until you're done." I did as she told me, smiling the whole time. These panties fit me much better than any others I had ever tried on. Then Mom had me put the slippers on and follow her into the bathroom. There, she combed my hair and parted it differently, and used the barrettes to hold it away from my face. When I looked in the mirror, I thought I looked just like any other nine-year-old girl. They're all set to open the rest of the presents. Sure, Mom. Let's go and see what else is there. I held Mom's hand going back down the stairs. The long gown made it difficult to see my feet. Use your other hand to hold the bottom of the nightgown up a little. That way you can see your feet and not stumble going down the steps. Like this. Mom held her gown with her free hand, and I followed her example. It did make the stairs easier to navigate. That's all for now. See you in the next video. Till then, take care. Oh yes, next part of this series will be published soon. So please subscribe to my channel and please support me worth one dollar only. Link in the comment and description.